Welcome to part two of our interview with Kenny Jones, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who's kindly invited us to his home here. Kenny, is drumming something which comes from something within all of us, perhaps, because it was an early form of communication? Is it, is it a real basic talent that maybe is in everybody, but only some people manage to pull it out? Or? It's a life sentence. A life sentence. <laughs> it's what it is. You can't stop it. You know, it's, I'm addicted to drums because you can't yeah. keep away from them. Yeah. You, you can play it on your, without a drum well, kit. You can play it with a drum kit. You can do. You make kit. anything sound good. Yeah. I mean, at parties when there's been nothing there, you know, saucepans, boxes, everything yeah. like that. Yeah. You suddenly get into this detailed explanation of this drum. It's you know, it's round and it's got this beautiful sound. It's made of yeah. this wood, that wood, that wood, and that wood. Yeah. And I'm gonna go. Give us it here. Fuck it. It's round. I said anything Hit round. It. Put it. It's Hit fine. It, yeah. it makes a noise. Great. Fine. <laughs> you know, but you no, know, there are good and bad quality yeah. quality drums. But um, no, I mean, I just love it. You never stop learning. Yeah. And, you, and you, as long as you keep pushing yourself to the outer limits. And, and I love watching other drummers because even though you, you're unconsciously, you will pick up something. Did you find the essential way of learning was, was playing with the band, though, with the, with the boys back in the, the small faces when you first got the kit? And oh, there's nothing know. like that. I mean, the first yeah. time I ever played with anybody was when I used to go... I heard about this pub called the British Prince in the yeah. East End. And every Friday, this, it was a, they had a fun sort of music night where this jazz band would play. And so I went up there one night, I heard about the band playing there, and I'd only been playing for about, I don't know, three weeks or something like that, or trying to play. Yeah. So I sat there in front of the drummer, right? And I'm pretending that, I, mean, I was only, what, 13, 12 yeah. or 13, pretending I was every bit sort of 18 and could, and could have this lager in my hand, really. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, look, I, I got away with it-ish. Anyway, I sat there. And I watched this drummer, his name was Roy, and he was a singing drummer. And I'd never seen a singing drummer before, because yeah. he had a Reslo mic coming through yeah. the middle of him, and he'd play like that, Lovely. see? So, so, so it was like, like, so you had to go yeah, we had no, We had no goosenecks and shit like that in no. those days. It was just literally, well, that's, a, that's a good place for it, it comes up <laughs> right there. You know, and um, so he put his arms around it and played the drums like that, you know? And um, so I sat in front of him, a bit like we are, you know? Yeah. So you're the drummer and I'm sitting there, yeah. and I'm watching him and go, yeah, yeah, like that. So then he, he kind of, play like this and it start to blink, you know. And then suddenly go <laughs> and he's singing at the same time. And I thought, shit. So after he finished, he had a, it was a break, he came up to me, he said, You taking the fucking piss out of me, mate. I said, What? What have I done? He said, You keep blinking at me. I said, No, no, I don't. I suddenly realised what I was doing. It's because it's infectious, isn't it? So I You saw, were blinking back yeah, at him. Yeah, blinking back at him. So I told him then we started laughing and stuff like <laughs> that. I said, Well you're blinking and he said, No, I'm not. No, I don't. Blinking line. Blinking line, yeah. <laughs> and so that was that. So the following week, uh, I went, went up there and he said, uh, we've got a special guest tonight, young drummers in here, he's going to play. You know, I thought, shit, who's that? Not seen anyone like that before. New drummer. And then he introduced me, and I went, that was it. The whole room filled up with water. I was so scared, you know. Oh, no. Then I um, found myself sitting behind the kit, and, and it's, it's an alien kit. It's yeah. something, it's all set up wrong, not the way I like it, you know. Yeah. You couldn't start moving yeah. it around because... That's right, yeah. And these, these guys were like, in the band, uh, they looked like giants going up and up. I, so I, I was sitting down and all of a sudden I looked up and there they were, still growing, you know. <laughs> so, and one of them looked at me and said, sort of, right, it, it was like one, two, three, four sort of thing. But it sounded like one, yeah. two, three, like slow motion, you know. And that was it, I was off and I was playing and that was it. And I just and, that, and then you know you can do it. And that's then... the first time I played with the band. What happened was the barman came up and I yeah. finished, I sat down and the barman said to me, he said, that was great. He said, uh, are, are, you, are you in a band? I, went, I said, oh, I'm forming a band now. That's what I'm doing, that's what I want to do. He said, because my brother's just learning to play guitar and he wants to form a band. Shall I bring him down next week? So I said, okay. So the next week on a Friday about six o'clock, sitting there waiting. And then the door opened and this guy walks in with a grey suit, immaculate, and uh, he had this starched collar on like this, you see, and a tie. Yeah. And every time he'd look round like that, the, the tie and the shirt would stay like that, because it's quite... It, so it was that and stiff? Uh, it was Ronnie Lane, yeah. Ronnie Lane? Yeah. The barman, yeah. this is how life goes, isn't it? See, the, the barman who was behind the bar was Ronnie Lane's brother, and that's who came up to me after. So, so that's all these things the are meant to be. So. Yeah, it's all, all a kind of a. So Ronnie and I, Lane and I, just started, uh, you know, just playing together. And yeah. I used to get on a bus with a snare drum and bits and pieces, and yeah. God knows how I did it in those days. To Ronnie's, and he'd come to me and we'd play. And then uh, Ronnie said one day, I don't want to play guitar, I want to play bass. And luckily, I bought my drum kit in a shop called J60s yeah. in Manor Park, East End. 
and Ronnie lived at the top of that road, so he bought his first guitar there. So I said, let's go back to the J60s and see what they've got in there, because we'd like to go to the shop anyway. Yeah. So went there, and it was on a Saturday morning, and this guy came up to us as soon as we got in there, real sort of young, cocky little over, you know, and said, how can I help you? What do you want? You know, like that. So, okay, uh, bass, I want a bass, you yeah. know, not, not guitar. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, all right, try this one. So, and there was a couple of drum kits set up in there, so I sat behind the drum kit. Ronnie Lane was plonking away at this thing, you know, and then the, the guy picked up a guitar, so we all started to play again, yeah. you know, and that was Steve Marriott. That was Steve Marriott who picked mm. up the... Mm. Yeah. So that's how so we invited him to the gig that evening yeah. uh, with our band, which was called The Pioneers, I think, by then, yeah. or something like that. We had a gig in uh, a pub in, just on the other side of Tower Bridge, and... Uh, we, we said, come, on, come along and sing with us, you know. Yeah. Uh, so he got up at the appropriate moment. The rest of the band sort of, uh, sort of looked and wondered what was going on. He jumped on top of the piano, started to sing, and this amazing, powerful voice came out yeah. when we sang. Then he, he got carried away. The audience went nuts. The, Steve broke all the keys on the piano because he's yeah. jumping all over the thing. All right. um, and we brought the house down, but then the... the uh, the guy who owned the pub threw us out. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So the rest of the band <laughs> wouldn't talk to us again. So yeah. it was me, Ronnie, and Steve sitting on my drum cases and his amp, and we just looked at each other and burst out laughing. And that was the birth <laughs> of the small faces. Right. That yeah. was the birth of the small faces. Yeah. Yeah. And also, so these things are meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Also, I mean, the, the melodic way that Ronnie Lane played the bass. Obviously, I comes. love his bass playing. He's so yeah. melodic, so different, such a different way of playing. And it's got to be because he played the lead guitar first. Yeah, it's funny when I joined the Who. It was like uh, it, I was, it was like being between two lead guitarists. One had a bass yeah. end on it, and the other <laughs> one had the top on it. You know, it's like that. And the only one that was playing the bass, like regular bass, was my bass drum. To be honest, it was like that. Yeah. But with, um, with the Who, as loud as you expected, or louder, or louder, louder. <laughs> louder yeah. Were they as, were they as mad or bad or dangerous as they might have been in the earlier days, or? Well, I knew they were totally mad anyway, yeah. but uh, <laughs> no, they kind of, as, when I joined the band, we'd all kind of got, had fa yeah. got families and things like that. No, yeah, yeah when I first started, there was, there was, there was, I was just going for a divorce, so I was hitting the source, all right, yeah. and uh, uh, Townsend was on a bottle of brandy and whatever, and uh, it's got a couple of bottles, and yeah. so we were going, and the was always on it, so it's great. Yeah. So we were hanging out together and getting, and Roger, because, Got, got, got quite frustrated with everything like that because we were yeah. totally out of our trees all the time. And he, what, he didn't do that. Roger wasn't quite so into that then. Oh no, he's well, cause, no. Roger, was, no, he's never really a drinker. He's kind of a, more of a gin and tonic man. Really. Oh, oh right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. So you kind of knew him already, anyway. Yeah. So, so yeah. it's fine. I've, that's, and then uh, one day I thought I've got to stop this, you know. So, yeah. I, so I slowed down a bit and then stopped drinking. You know, th that's the time when I, you had to really concentrate to learn those songs. The hardest thing about being in who was learning the songs. Yeah. Not actually being Not there, because I knew everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just learning the songs and rehearsals and all that type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and, and that was an experience, you know, and uh, I would have given anything not to have joined the Who. I don't, right. Because it would have, you know, I'd have given anything to Mooney to still be there, because yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. you know, he was, there is only one drummer for the Who, and, yeah. that's, and that's Keith Moon. Yeah. And that's, that's the way it'll always be. Yeah. You know, but I did enjoy the opportunity to actually yeah. to, to And be do the it. first one as well, to step yeah. into his shoes. I kind of... You know, I've served my tour of duty yeah. in a sense, you know, but it's yeah. it, it was um, it was different. It was great. It was exciting. You know, like the yeah. small like the small faces was the most creative band I've been in. Yeah, the faces was the most fun party yeah. ever go lang at Blackie and yeah. the Who I have to say was most exciting. Yeah, do you ever get the panics? Have you ever had that while playing the drums? I have nightmares sometimes. Well, I used to, don't anymore. But about going on stage and the drum, I, the drum kit would be the wrong way around. I've also, I'd have no I've shoes and socks, or the sticks weren't there, yeah. or the, the whole thing's been set up the wrong backwards. I used stuff. to get that where the toms are facing out and, yeah, and all that no, sort of stuff. And yeah. what about in terms of danger? Didn't you once fly a helicopter to Live no, Aid? When we did Live Aid, yeah, yeah. No, I'd, I'd, be, I'd got my um, license in 83. Yeah. And um, we had to be there at nine o'clock in the morning for this to meet. Uh, Diana and Prince Charles and do the royal ceremony. It had yeah. to be there at nine in the morning. Right. So I thought, oh shit. So I, um, <laughs> this is real rock star flamboyance, <laughs> this one. So I, um, what I did do is I sent my driver to, um, we had to, into, to Wembley to meet me, right? Um, and I had a Rolls Royce then, you know. So oh, right. Horrible. Anyway, <laughs> so I, um, I took off in my helicopter and landed in Battersea 
parked up in, in Battersea, and then I got, because they knew I could fly the pilots there, you know, they said, would you like to sit up front? And I said, I did. So I co-piloted that helicopter, Live Aid 1 or 2, I can't remember what it was called. And we landed in a, in a plane. We weren't allowed to land inside the stadium, right. so you could land next to it in a plane field. So we la landed there. Yeah. And then um, my, I got straight out into my Rolls Royce, <laughs> drove a few yards into the thing, right? And then sat there, yeah, it'd be nice. <laughs> and then I, I reversed it all. And went back and landed in. Landed in the, the yeah, did exactly the same thing. And they went Land, home the same way. Seat, took yeah. off in my helicopter and went and watched it, most of it on telly. And then about an hour before we were due to go on, I did. You did the same thing I again. Did the same thing, but I took a pilot with me because then I, I could take off. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I you did there. the gig and I had to get a car back. <laughs> it <was> terrible. <laughs> Dear me. <Yeah. laughs> I had to go by road. <laughs> Shocking. What do you think about these um, double bass drum pedals? Yeah. These things that have been invented in the last few years or whatever. Try them. Do you bother with it? No, I don't. you only need one pedal. Yeah, I've got a very fast foot, so <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a bit. There's a little bit of perhaps cheating going on with the old double pedal sort of thing. You, you sort of kind of. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, yeah, if you've got double pedal, it's easy to. Do, <laughs> yeah, I've heard you use shorter sticks than most. The shorter sticks. Yeah. I was given a lesson the other day. And I thought this kid came over the other day. Ollie is fantastic. He's uh, he's a tr he's a guitarist really, yeah. and he's just completely addicted to music and yeah. he said, oh, your sticks are short. And I said, I said well, yeah, they're, because I remember sticks being short when I started, mm -hmm. you know, and someone must have said, let's make them longer without actually doing it, asking, without any, asking anyone. Uh, no, nobody asked, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, um, I saw the ends off about yeah. just, just a tiny bit over an inch and then I rolled the ends and stuff like that. Ah, you know? so and I went into, funny enough, I went into um, a shop in Guildford and I, um, looking through the drumsticks there and there's a set of Phil Collins ones and there were, Exactly the same length yeah. as me. He did the same as well. The great minds think alike then. Probably, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> did you find that when you first discover drumming, um, of course you discover all this, so mm. there's lots to be done, mm. lots of potential and whatever. Mm. And then as you get on into it over the years, you start to leave more out mm. as, as, as Oh yeah, go that's, that's the Al Jackson technique. For yeah. me, um, it was, it's, not, it's not what you play, it's what you don't play. Yeah. And also the, pa the, 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 the fearsome side of drumming is that it's so significant because if you do get something going wrong, that really is going to fuck it up. Well, I would say if I make a mistake, yeah, everyone, you know, it's like it's like a, a dustbin being thrown down the stairs. That's what it you, feels you know, like. Oh shit! Yeah. Everyone's looked at, look, yeah. everyone's noticed that, but it yeah. really, no one really does notice it. Yeah. But if you, for, for instance, if you've got like the seizure in your arm or something like that, and you can't do it all. Yeah, of a I once poked myself in the eye when I, when Ronnie, really? Lee, we had our first ba uh, band. We formed it. It was called the Outcasts. Yeah. And we were doing the okie cokey. <laughs> I sort of went nuts, you know. And suddenly the stick hit me in the eye, and I ended up falling over the stool like, like, that way. The rest of the band looked around there. I was with my feet in the air. In the <laughs> it's great. I ended up wearing a eye patch for a week. Yeah. I quite like that actually. Kenny, your favourite drummers? My favourite drummers, apart from Al Jackson, who yeah. is is the ultimate. And uh, my favourite drummers are uh, Brian Bennett. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Elliott. Yeah. Um, because they're. They've kind of got great styles and great techniques, and, yeah. and I, I learned so much from them as well. I knew Little B off by art, actually, to be honest. Yeah. The Shadows is the best band in the world. Yeah. I wish I could have been in that band, <laughs> you know, but there you go. And what about Ringo? Ringo, I, I, I love Ringo's drumming. Yeah. It's so different and so go gorgeous and simple. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's not the, it's not the tech, it's not the, the speed that you do anything yeah. and stuff like that. It's what you play and how you play. He plays himself, which is good. Yeah. And those feels, are so, no one else can do those feels like it. And what about um, Charlie? Charlie Watts is one of my all-time favourites as well, you know. Same I mean, yeah. all my favourite drummers were from that era because that's yeah. where I grew up with everybody yeah. like that, you know. And they're all mates, you know, which is even... And better. we mentioned Phil Collins earlier. Phil, yeah. He yeah. was local once. Yeah. He moved yeah. to Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? Um, yeah, there's loads of them, I mean. John Bonham? Bonham, I mean, how could you not Bonzo? like John Bonham? Yeah, yeah it's bloody brilliant. You know. And we go, we, Zeppelin and Faces were touring quite a lot in the yeah. States at the same time. We used to bump into each other. And we used to go to this place called Lowe's Midtown. Yeah. Well, that was the hotel we stayed in. They had uh, uh, an English pub just up the road. So me and them used to go up there. Yeah. They sold Watney's Red Barrel now and Shepherd's Pie. Watney's Red Barrel and, and Shepherd's He could knock them back, I tell you. <laughs> so, yes, there. he was w well known for being uh, capable in that, yeah. in that respect. Anyone else spring to mind at all? 
Uh, no, let's leave it there. Leave it there. Yeah. yeah. No, there's lots of great. There's lots of great drummers around. What I like about today's sort of is because there's so many more drum kits. There's so much more internet. There's so much more music. Yeah. It's different styles of playing with just funk and more different funk and rap and God knows yeah. what. These new drummers are just unbelievable. Yeah. They, they play in a different way. They grew up with that kind of style. Yeah. So they grew up with the cultural speed. Not and all a bad drummer out there at all these yeah. days. And when you look at the internet, you keep getting, I keep yeah. getting these little links sent through of this, this little kid. They get smaller and smaller. Year, <laughs> see, I don't know, see, best thing's coming small players. <laughs> mad, bad and dangerous, which is what we all are. What mad, we all are, mad, bad and dangerous. Mad, bad and dangerous. So you air on the side it's of the madness. It's a great book, look, I read it the other night, right? <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, it's it's a good, it's a nice thing to do. It's get everyone's sort of different take on things and stuff. You know? well, if we did another one, would you like to get involved? Another book? Yeah. No. My band dangerous <laughs> too. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Yeah. Of course I would. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Listen, Kenny, thanks so much for uh, inviting us here today. That's all right. It was great meeting you. Great. And, um, uh, hopefully Who's got we'll the money? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't seen the first part of our interview with uh, Kenny Jones, hit the previous vid button. Next up, Derek McKenzie of Jamiroquai. It's going to be a good one. And please always remember to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Cheers. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah I've heard you use shorter sticks than most. I use short sticks, but I have a big knob. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's only twice we've actually had it long enough to actually do two parts. Yeah, so, feels uh, like I've got a parrot on my shoulder yeah. and you're talking to it. <laughs> <laughs> This is a chair. <laughs> <laughs> so I must take back into the kitchen. Uh, you know, we'll sit on it once in a minute. So. This is um, a round drum. Um, yeah. This is another <laughs> round drum. <laughs> <laughs> this is scaffolding. Scaffold. Okay. Hardware. Okay. A symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jerome Marcus uh, asked you this question. Uh, Who's uh, that? You know, that bloke over that there. That bloke's in here. <laughs> Kings yeah. are over there. It's a nice thing to do. It's to get everyone's sort of different take on things and stuff. You know? Well, if we did another one, would you like to get involved? Another book? Yeah. No. Mad Band Dangerous <laughs> 2? No. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> yeah. Of course I would. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank problem. you. I Listen, like Kenny, you know, John to... And don't come back, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and this is my prized possession. If you read it, it's, okay, it's yeah. a telegram from Keith Moon's mum. When I first joined the band, we did Wembley Stadium, right? And, and she sent me a telegram. And I knew Keith Moon's mum anyway. From that's so it's, it's lovely. That says that says it all, to be honest. Yeah. 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 That's really nice. And it's yeah. also that's the best thing I've got. Uh, forget all the gold discs. Forget everything. Yeah. You know? yeah. Don't need all that. Yeah.